This video is to show you how to do subset model building for regression um, with multiple regression and dummy variables. Uh, if you'll notice here, there is a region variable on the far left. We're not actually going to use it as categorical. Instead, we are going to use um, dummy variables for uh, the first two regions. Let's call them A and B. Notice we do not include region C. That is because we don't need that information. Uh, again, with regression, parsimony is what we're striving for, less is more. Um, so if you have variables A and B included in there, C kind of is a given. Let's say if your, um, if your uh, data is in uh, region one, or sorry, region A, um, then it's definitely not in region C. If your data is not in region A or B, it must be in region C. So you can actually infer C uh, by the values of A and B um, combined. So we don't include it. You include one less dummy than the total number of um, categories in um, a categorical variable. Um, okay, and now first thing we're gonna need to do to build our regression model is to do our variance inflationary factor, our VIF. Uh, and what we need to do with that, we need to take all of our x variables and run them one at a time um, as the dependent variable. Okay, so very first uh, regression I'm going to do is I'm going to grab number of partners as my, um, as my dependent variable and then number of professionals through B as my independence. Now, little note here, revenue is what I'm looking to forecast. Maybe I'll uh, clarify that. That is going to be... In my model, that's going to be my y or my dependent variable. And um, the rest of these variables here listed are the independents. So to do your VIFs, first you run the first regression with the first x1 as your y. Get your r squared related to that after. Regression. I'm going to need to use the R squared from that after. I'll grab that later. Uh, and then I'm going to um, run another regression. I'm just going to grab all the X's here. And in this case, I'm going to use the X2 as the dependent variable. It's a number of professionals. Now, data analysis tool pack is a little bit funny. You need all of your um, X's in a row. So I needed to reshuffle. I just bumped a number of professionals over um, because I need all my X's that I'm going to use in a row. So the Y now is going to be number of professionals and the X's are going to be number of partners through to B here. And I'm going to use this R squared after as well. I'm actually going to grab this input and just put it in beside this data. Uh, one thing to note, I'm not um, modifying my original data set. Here it is. That's important in Excel. In Excel is a little bit dangerous with your data. You could overwrite anything. Um, so if I'm going to modify my data, like, let's say move um, one of the columns to the left here, uh, I'm just going to uh, put that in a new sheet here. Um, okay. Now, so here it is. So I modified my data, added the regression beside it. So number of professionals, call it no prof. Um, and then I'm going to grab that same data and now modify it to make my MAS percentage as my dependent. I'm just going to put it to the far left here too, then I'm ready to run my regression. Um, and again, I'm doing all of this to get my VIFs, my variance inflationary factors which then help me decide what variables um, to include in my subset regression modeling. Okay, so this R squared also, we're gonna use that later. Back to 
my original data. I'm going to do this again for A and for B. Okay, one thing that's nice is if you kind of set up your each of the um, regressions the same way here, what's nice is that when you click on regression in the data analysis tab, it's all set up for you. Um, it's even going to put the output where it would like, which is in G1. So you just click OK once your data is ready. I use this R squared after 2. And one last one to do for B here. So the independent variable that's going to be treated as the y uh, for our VIF calculation, I just put it on the far left. And this is all set up now. Uh, and I'm going to use that r squared also. Okay. And now we're ready to uh, calculate our VIFs. Okay, so what we're going to need are R squareds um, from each of these regression models we did. Um, which I'm just going to go grab from each of the spreadsheets. Just labeling things here, making a little table. So I'm just going to go grab all of those R squareds. divided by 1 minus each of the r squareds. Now, um, what we don't want, we don't want VIFs over 5. So both of these first two are bad. The worst of them is the 7 here. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to redo our VIF test. Uh, and we're going to exclude number of professionals from it. So it's not even going to be uh, included in the model. Um, okay, so this is quite lengthy to do your VIF test. Um, so next piece here, we're going to have to um, go re-grab our data here. And um, I'm just going to call this data too. Find some way to organize things that make sense to yourself as you're doing this. Um, so the data here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the number of professionals. Um, and then I'll redo my VIF calculations without it and see what happens. So there are two VIFs over five, but sometimes what happens when you pull out the one of them, the other one gets better. <clears throat> Why you're doing this is um, you are looking to prevent what's called multicollinearity. That's where your x variables are correlated. Um, <clears throat> and we don't want that. That's bad. Um, we want the x's to not be correlated, but we want the x's to be correlated to the y. Like clear, we don't want them correlated to each other. We just want them correlated to the y. <clears throat> okay, so now we're ready to run this whole VIF test again. <clears throat> First one we're going to do is number of partners again. Excuse me, and we're going to sorry um, rerun the regression on that. Okay. The nice thing is, the only thing we need to modify is that we just go to column D now, and let's put our output in column F instead of G. And there we go. So we're going to use this R squared. Good. And then um, go grab the same. Data, we're going to do this for the MAS now. I'm going to rename that MAS2. Okay, put that guy first. 
This is, as you can see, quite the process doing this VIF testing. Uh, and now what's nice though is that our regression should all be set up so you can just click OK now. Gorgeous, we're going to use that R squared. Okay, uh, and we're going to do this again for A and B. Let's go grab these guys. We run our next regression with A. There's our R squared. Notice it hasn't changed. And then we run a final regression with B as our dependent variable. Again, everything's set up, so you just click OK now. And notice that R squared has not changed either. Okay, so now we're ready to go get our R squareds for each of these. Go grab them from each of the regression outputs. That's what I'm doing right now. And get your VIFs from there, which is one divided by one minus the R squared from the regression. And you'll notice the VIF for the number of partners drastically improved. It used to be, previously, it was 6.68 roughly, which is really high, it's well above 5. Um, we want all of our VIFs to be below 5. Um, and now when we pulled out number of professionals, it really improved. It's close to one now. And that means um, that number of partners and number of professionals were correlated, which you do not want in a regression. So we have now figured out which are independent variables. Uh, it's all of these guys here, a number of partners. Uh, MAS percentage and A and B. No, A and B are dummies that are actually related back to the same variable, which is region. So they actually need to either come together or not be in there at all. Um, that's a bit of a later topic that we would talk about if we kept going with regression.